So, well, good morning, um, everybody, and um, I would like to welcome you on behalf of the four organizing organizations here. It's a great pleasure to see you all here at zero zero. Um, this isn't a negotiation space. We've taken, most of us have taken our ties off. Celine's come in his jeans. So that's a reminder that this is the development and climate days, uh, not something else. Uh, we are really focusing on the intersection, the convergence, the necessary convergence of the development, poverty reduction, economic growth, and climate change is, uh, issues. That's why we're here. We probably all feel passionate about it. And um, I hope many of us feel comfortable with playing games as a way of that. But it's a different kind of space. Um, and, and, and that's very much the mode of, of the weekend. And I, and I hope you really enjoy it. So on behalf of um, our four organizations, I'd like to welcome you. Um, I'd like you to know who the directors and representatives of our organizations are. So I'm going to ask um, um, Camilla Toulmin, who's the director of IID, just to um, be visible. This is Camilla. So uh, she leads IID, who are one of the hosts here. Martin Van Alst, who's sitting there, uh, leads the director of the Red Cross Climate Change and Red Crescent Climate Change Center. Um, and Kevin Watkins, uh, of the director of ODI, is represented by the climate change lead ODI, Tom Mitchell. So. Um, on behalf of the four of us, thank you all very much for giving your precious time to be with us. This event is about, as I said, ending extreme poverty and getting net emissions um, of, CO, of greenhouse gases, CO2 in particular, to zero. That's a huge task, isn't it? Um, uh, and it's not a dream, but it's a, real, a realizable task uh, uh, that we, if we put our back into it collectively through our institutions, uh, that we can make a difference and really achieve. Um, and we need to aim high. We need to be ambitious to do that, to make the necessary transformations um, in the economies and societies uh, which, which we belong, the global society and our national levels. Um, and we need to change much, and we need to challenge much in our thinking and acting. And I think this is a weekend for us to enter that space uh, of doing that. The UNEP's emissions gap report is just... Um, told us the gloomy news about emissions being at their highest level ever last uh, in 2012 of 54 gigatons of CO2 equivalent. Um, and we need to get that to zero uh, before 2100, um, 2065 if we just look CO2, but, but a bit later if we include other greenhouse gases. And as a report that's launched today as a background to this event, uh, there are copies of it outside if you haven't seen it, uh, targeting Zero Zero, it's produced by ODI's background to this event. Um, there's a very nice phrase about um, business as usual. Um, um, let me quote it directly. Business as usual generates a strong headwind against efforts to eradicate extreme poverty. We can't be in a business as usual space anymore. Uh, it's very clearly set out in the report. Of course, the Sustainable Development Goals, which are underway in their development uh, uh, in, in, um, through United Nations process, has set out um, some ambitious goals for 2030 in terms of um, ending poverty in all its forms everywhere as goal number one, and goal 13 around taking urgent action to combat climate change and its impacts. And these aren't disconnected goals. It's very clear the consultations we've had in CDKN uh, and uh, in, in, in a number of countries about how, how, how most stakeholders believe a clear standalone goal and mainstreaming climate change across all of the SDGs is essential to drive this transformational change. And other analysis, which is summarized in this report, has shown us that a zero emission growth trajectory can, can really get us a long way towards this. The, the New Climate Economy Report says that between 50 and 90% of the actions um, uh, that it sets out in that report can deliver, can deliver 50 to 90 percent of, of, of what needs to be done to get us to within the safe uh, limits of two degrees. But that last 10 percent, or it could be 50 percent, I mean the range is still very large, uh, is going to cost something, one to three percent of GDP according to some of the analysis. And that's going to be hard, but I think it's very clear that, that, that we can eliminate um, extreme poverty and achieve a net zero emissions. And I think we need to be optimistic about the, me the methods of doing that. 
So that's why we come together. And it's the power of our networks to help deliver that. It's been a pleasure to work together with the Red Cross Climate Center, ODI, and IAD in the preparation of this event. And we've done this singly, we've done this in pairs, but we've never done this as a quartet before. Uh, and I think that's, that's the power of us working together, but you from your own networks to, to, to drive this change. This is a space um, uh, for everybody. This is where everybody's voices can be heard. You're sitting around tables, not in, not in, 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 in rows as in the cinema. Um, and I really hope your voice will be heard today. But I would like to just give the floor very briefly before I introduce our speaker, our keynote speaker this morning, very briefly give the floor to someone who's been a real change agent uh, in bringing the voice of the least developed country group to the negotiations and more broadly to this agenda of zero poverty and, and zero emissions. And this is um, the Minister of Wildlife, Parks and Environment and Climate Change from the Gambia, Pars Mjaju. It's a pleasure to have Pa with us for a, a, a short period at the beginning of the day. And I wonder whether, Pa, you could just say a couple of words about how you see this, uh, the importance of this agenda before I go on to introduce Yolanda. <clears throat> Thank you very much, uh, Sam. It's a pleasure to be here. Uh, I think the team is apt and well fitting, timely, as we lead to 2015, which is very important. Zero poverty, zero emissions means sustainable land management, energy for all, water security, sustainable agriculture, climate smart agriculture, it means housing for the poor, it means really getting rid of the very core values and aspirations of least developed countries, despite the minimum emissions that we are emitting. We are facing a lot in terms of the emissions. You have most of our country people poor, so by zero poverty, we would achieve the aspirations of the least developed country work program and also humanity at large. I am impressed that all of you here are working directly with the people who are affected on the ground. So I would implore on you to ensure that in your strategies that you will be developing, for next year and beyond, touch on the fundamentals of zero poverty and zero emissions. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you very much, Paul. There's one other person you all should know who's the godfather of development and climate change, and that's Salim Al-Haq. Salim, please could you stand and so everyone can see you. And, and thank you, really, for all you've done for this event. Thank you, Salim. So I, would, uh, I have a huge pleasure to introduce you to Yolanda Kakabadze, and I think I can think of no greater champion of the sustainable development agenda than Yolanda. For 40 years, she has worked so hard to do so much to, to, to tackle these challenges. Um, Yolanda has done some remarkable things, um, but one of the most powerful things that she did uh, was back in 1992 in, in Rio, in, in, in the U UN Conference for Environment and Development, which was, of course, the birthplace of the UNFCCC, which has brought us here together today. Yolanda led, um, I understand, the civil society gathering there, and that's affected many lives and many organizations. It was the birthplace of a lot of the activity that we still see going on today. And Yolanda had played a very important convening role at that time. She's gone on to do many things, was Minister of Environment uh, in, in the, in, for the government of Ecuador, um, was president of IUCN, um, and is, Yolanda's currently the president of, of WWF International. Um, and we have great pleasure to have Yolanda on the board of CDKN as well. So Yolanda, thank you very much for being with us. We look forward to hearing your words. <clears throat> 